Hetlesede is the world's largest geothermal power station by capacity. 303 megawatts of electricity and 400 megawatts of thermal energy, all driven by the steam extracted from the hot volcanic rocks beneath it. And it is those basaltic rocks combined with the waste CO2 and H2S hydrogen sulfide which makes carb fix work. Once you dissolve the CO2 in the water, the water becomes corrosive, so it attacks the rocks and releases calcium, magnesium and iron out of the rocks. And that can then bind with CO2 and form a stable, solid mineral. And we say it, it's rock steady. We have stoned it. The process is surprisingly simple. CO2 and H2S from the generation process are captured by dissolving them into water. The solution is then injected 2,000 metres down into the basalt rocks where it mineralises into solid carbonates and sulphates. The gas literally turns into rock. And at Hetlisede, the new rock solidifies in just two years. The whole idea behind this was to uh, use the Icelandic situation, the Icelandic rock types, the Icelandic bedrock, to, to react with uh, geothermal gases. When this power plant was first commissioned back in 2006, the aroma of the hydrogen sulphide in the atmosphere could be detected 30 kilometres away in the capital Reykjavik, an eggy smell that the residents really didn't like. But by injecting those geothermal gases now back into the ground where they came from, the scientists here have hit upon a method which is both environmentally friendly and sustainable for decades to come. The big question is whether the process can be scaled up and still stay economical. Nonetheless, the Icelandic scientists are convinced that CarbFix has global applications. And you can take this to other industries, like aluminium smelters, where they emit SO2, where they emit hydrogen fluoride, and where they emit uh, CO2. And you can do the same thing. The search for economically viable carbon capture methods continues. But Iceland believes it's found the solution to the storage part of the question. Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, Iceland.